Um, the, other, the other thing that's really interesting, and this was in an autobiography by Harold Prince, um, they're in pre-game performances, and the first number of the show is the pajama game. It's very short. It tells you what the show is about. And then the second number was racing it with the clock. And Jerome Robbins had the big idea of that song, Seven and a Half Cents, is sensational. Why don't we lead off the play with that? And so they tried it for one performance. It didn't work because again, it came across not as fun as it does at the end of the show, but it came out angry and it did not set the tone for what the audience was gonna see. So professionals may know what it might take to put together a show, but on the other hand, they make mistakes all the time. So we can talk about flop after flop on Broadway that just didn't get it right. And maybe some night I'll uh, be able to do a TED talk about that because um, Michelle and I see a lot of shows in New York and the first thing that we talk about is what they did right, what they did wrong, and what they could have done better. Because theater is a living, breathing uh, piece of art. And it always varies by the creative people that put it together, the cast that's um, part of um, the initial run that make an impression. And um, Pajama Game has had a life after its initial Broadway production. It uh, played in London, very American subject, and it opened in 55 and played about 500 performances, which is pretty good for an American musical comedy in London. Um, it was made into a film, and uh, it pretty much took most of the Broadway cast, except for Janice Page, and they cast Doris Day in the role because she was box office. But she was suited for the part, but in a bit of her autobiography, she had a difficult time because everybody came from the Broadway production. They knew each other. They knew what their timing was. And she felt like she was sticking out like a sore thumb. But the movie got pretty decent reviews. My take on the movie is it's very faithful to the Broadway production, but it's slow. It's like George Abbott, who co-directed the movie with Stanley Donan, um, <laughs> from Singing in the Rain, of all things, who knew musicals, but because Abbott came from the stage, he wanted to time the movie so he knew where the laughs were. And so there, to me, there's big holes in the pacing and it's a fun movie. You get to see Bob Fosse and um, Steam Heat, classic. Um, but, it's, but it's fun. But I think you'll have a great time at the production that you're gonna see next week. Um, there have been a couple of revivals on Broadway. There was one in the um, 70s with Hal Linden and Barbara McNair, and they did an interracial couple. And it really wasn't all that palatable at the time, and it maybe eked out about 100 performances, and then closed. And then the most recent revival on Broadway 
was um, with Harry Connick Jr. and Kelly O'Hare, and um, it had a limited run because Connick didn't want to commit to a long-term contract, <laughs> but it did win Best Revival that year. And um, they did a lot of things to tailor it to Connick's personality. One of the other great songs in the show is Hernando's Hideaway, Ole. <laughs> and for some reason, Harry Connick Jr. sat down at a piano and did like a five minute piano solo on Hernando's Hideaway, which slowed down the um, pace of the show, but it was highly entertaining. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you about the pajama game. Do you guys have any specific comments or things that you're looking forward to or things that we want to talk about? Because at 8.15, we've got um, three of our cast members to give you a preview of a couple of the musical numbers. <laughs>